Sega. Welcome to our first demo walkthrough for Total War Warhammer. What you're about to see is a scripted version of the Battle for Blackfire Pass, a set-piece quest battle between the Empire and the Greenskins. The game is very much a work in progress at this stage, but we hope you'll enjoy having a look at how it's all coming together. Now is the time, men of the Empire, to unite, for the Orcs gather! Beyond the pass, a war boss draws to him all that is foul. An orc horde beyond imagining. As Sigma thought, so shall we. We will become part of the legend. We will wipe the orcs from our door. And only when this is done, when our nation has healed, shall I take up Gal Maraz for Sigma, for the Empire, for the war. So that was Emperor Karl Franz giving his rousing pre-battle speech. He's one of the game's legendary lords, so he's a powerful general and a mighty warrior in his own right. Playing a campaign as the Empire, you'll unlock this particular quest battle as Karl Franz levels up. So the Empire's fielding a lot of artillery in this battle, but it's worth noting that you won't just be able to recruit all of this stuff right from the start of the game. There are quite a few late game units on show here today. And the same goes for spells as well. You'll see a lot of kind of late game, high level stuff. Now, as we approach the Greenskin line, you can see just how different these two races are. The armies from Warhammer Fantasy Battles give us so much diversity to work with. The playable race in the game are going to look and play really, really differently in both campaign and battle. And looking out over Blackfire Pass for a second here, you can just see the kind of fantastical landscapes that we've never been able to do before in a Total War game. And this is just one geographical part of the old world. Now, this is the Greenskin race leader Grimgor Ironhide. He's accompanied by the Immortals, his hard as nails band of Black Orc bodyguards. He's also brought an Orc Shaman into battle with him, so we'll see him throwing some spells around in a bit. So these snickering little goblins are manning a Doom Diver catapult. Now you can see a goblin fanatic there climbing into the mechanism eagerly with his homemade wings strapped to his arms. And as it fires, you can opt to take first person control of the Doom Diver and pilot him to his doom. Now it's a pretty wild ride, but once you get the hang of it, you can really get proficient. So that's another spellcaster right here. This is a goblin shaman. You can see him riding his wolf there. So he casts spells from the Little Wa magical lore. So there's a bit of a flanking counter-attack lining up here from the Empire. We've got some ranged cavalry up front there in the shape of Outriders and Pistoliers. Coming up behind them, we have the noble Imperial Knights of the Reichsguard and a unit of Demigriff Knights. These are super heavy shock cavalry on vicious, monstrous mounts. Now, they can withstand a real pounding, so they're really useful in longer melee engagements. So 
the Goblin Shaman here has just cast a spell called the Curse of Debad Wu. Now it's a pretty powerful, impressive looking high end spell, but it's worth noting that we don't want magic to be too OP. You'll have a limited pool of magic to use in every battle that recharges over time according to various factors. But basically you're going to have to pick and choose just when to cast high level spells like this. We don't want magic to totally dominate the game, it's more of a kind of useful supporting tool. So the demis are going in now and you can see just the beautiful handcrafted animations at work here. I mean you can see that throughout the battle. One thing that we're still working on is cavalry versus cavalry impacts, and in fact impacts across the board. So what we're aiming for is scenes like this to be much more punchy with more physical hit reactions from the cavalry that's struck. In short, we want to make a real kind of spectacle of these engagements. So panning down the line here, you can see just how dynamic our infantry charges have become. You've got units leaping into the fray, defenders physically bracing for impact. You've got AoE attacks going off from large characters. That's Grimgor Ironhide there getting stuck in with his big magical axe. And in go the trolls at the end of the line here. Now, monstrous infantry like this have, have you know, lots and lots of hit points. They can meet out a ton of damage with those big attacks as well. And these guys are also, as you can see, partial to puking acid bile all over their enemies. bit of aerial combat going on here between Deathclaw and the Wyvern. Now if you gain mastery of the skies in a battle like this, you can then use the maneuverability of your flying units to strike pretty much anywhere on the battlefield. And as the Wyvern comes down here to, to attack these state troopers, you can see how each of these big monsters has some really spectacular combat animations. It really brings them to life and gives them tons of character. Now, these are two of the Empire's hero characters. This is the warrior priest and just beyond him there, the witch hunter. Heroes are essentially agents, so they can roam the campaign map perform a number of different functions, but they're also powerful solo warriors in their own right, and if you attach them to an army, they can then throw themselves into combat alongside the troops. So this is the Orc Shaman casting one of the spells from the Big War uh, magical lore. Uh, so he's casting the Foot of Gork here, which is he's literally summoning the Orc god Gork to stamp his enemies into the dust, which is, as you can see, bad news for the Luminarch and the Steam Tank nearby.
And finally, the Empire's celestial wizard is summoning down the comet of Cassandora. So thanks for watching the demo, and this really just scratches the surface of the incredible Warhammer world we'll be asking you to conquer. To catch all the latest gameplay and feature reveals, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook.